Well, here we go again. Another World Cup qualification campaign. This is going to be a bit different, of course, because it's not five African sides that make it. It's nine and even possibly ten. So it could be a record number of African teams at a World Cup, which means a new qualification process and every team, all 54 African members of FIFA are straight in to the main group stage. There's no prior playoffs, no first round. It's all or nothing. You're in it to win it, um, which is going to be interesting. We might see some new nations play and uh, also it gives the lesser nations a big chance not, not to go just to an AFCON, but to a World Cup. So very exciting uh, indeed. So how's it going to work? So in between November 13 and November 21, the African sides are going to play their first two World Cup qualifying matches, um, match days one and two from this group. There'll be 10 match days in total with the first two taking place this year. People remember that Qatar World Cup was at the end of the year, so a couple of months, we're only two years away from another World Cup. That's why it's starting now. Now we're going to look at the groups first. It's very hard to predict who's going to make it because like I say, the World Cup's in two and a half years. It's going to be completely different. The sides are probably going to be completely different in terms of players, personnel, even managers probably. So it would be silly to try and foresee how the groups would look come match day nine and ten. But certainly from right here, right now, and also how the groups are going to kick off, we're going to be previewing match day one and two. So before I take you through all the fixtures, let's look at the groups again. So Group A has Egypt, Burkina Faso, Guinea-Bissau, Sierra Leone, Ethiopia and Djibouti. And it's worth pointing out every group winner, there's nine groups, every group winner makes it to the tournament. And then if you come second, the best four runners-up will enter a playoff system and it's a very long playoff system it's a semi-final or final and then an inter-confederation playoff against a country from another continent so let's just try and win the group a egypt you'd expect to win this but like i say the likes of salah and el Nenny will probably be bin and gone by the time this comes around and there's emerging talents like omar marmouche at frankfurt who's been very good he's been playing up front maybe even the new salah Burkina Faso and Guinea-Bissau are the biggest threats to Egypt. If Burkina Faso can get a good run together, which they kind of did last time out when they were in the group with us, they've got to play Djibouti again as well. They could do something, but it's going to come down to those Burkina-Egypt games. Guinea-Bissau are a good side, but not enough. So Egypt and Burkina Faso will run it close. And of course, Burkina Faso never been at the World Cup before, largely down to us. Group B is interesting. You've got Senegal... Um, DR Congo, Mauritania, Togo, Sudan and South Sudan. So already you've got you've got three North African teams. So you've got Mauritania, you've got Sudan, you've got South Sudan. Sudan are going to be playing um, home matches, probably not, not in Sudan. They can't play in Khartoum, I think, because of the, the political situation there. Togo have got to bounce back, but still won't have enough. Neither will Mauritania. DR Congo will be absolutely buzzing with the, the teams they could have had. I think they'll be quite pleased with that. But Senegal, again, very strong favourites. And even if the likes of Mane would retire... Look at all the players coming in, Saar, Jackson, these sorts of people. So they're well, and Dye at Marseille, they're well stocked up for the future. But you wouldn't rule out DL Congo. We don't know the players they're going to have by the time this comes around. They might even have wan and stuff by then. Group C is interesting. You've got Nigeria, the South Africans, Benin, Zimbabwe, who we welcome back to the football, who uh, got banned from the last qualifiers, Rwanda and Lesotho. South Africa are going to have to get something against Nigeria. Nigeria will be feeling very comfortable in that one. South Africa are going to have to probably win all their other fixtures and hope for a second place spot. Because Nigeria, I mean, with Ozimen, there could be a real powerhouse by then. Group D is wide open. Now, Cameroon, on paper, should run away with it. But Angola, for a pot three team, got an unbelievable opportunity. They were at the World Cup in 2006 when only five teams could make it. Libya, Eswatini, Mauritius and Cape Verde as well. I think Angola are going to run very close with Cameroon in Group D. Because by the time they get all the players they want, with the other teams they got for a pot free side, I could see Angola having a real stab at this against, against Cameroon. Group E, Morocco, Zambia, Congo, uh, Tanzania, Niger and Eritrea. Now, I mean, Tanz Tanzania, Niger, Eritrea, half that group, Morocco could field a, a second string team and, and still win those games. Eritrea, incidentally, it looks like they're actually going to withdraw. Um, they're not going to participate in the qualifiers. So this may well be a five team group with just eight match days. Um, so we're waiting for confirmation, but it looks like Eritrea, Eritrea will withdraw. Morocco are going to have far too much for that. Even in the AFCON group, they've got Zambia. That'll give an indication as to how this group goes. But 
Morocco comfortably. I can't see a team from there coming second and making to the playoffs, unfortunately. Group F, Ivory Coast, Gabon, Kenya, Gambia, Burundi and Seychelles. Gambia, again, no luck. Why are Gambia in pot four? They're AFCON quarter-finalists. AFCON again now. I think that's a bit harsh. You know, Kenya in pot three. Didn't even play in the last qualification campaign. Welcome back, Kenya. Aubameyang's days are over. Uh, even if Lamina stays, Gabon are a mess. Ivory Coast comfortable. If Gambia get their act together, they could go for second with a good run. Same with Kenya. If Michael Alunga gets his act together, they could go on a good run. But Kenya... You know, Wanyama's not what he was and, and Olunga playing in the Middle East, it's, it's a lot on one player. But Kenya and Gambia, maybe, but unlikely. Ivory Coast strong for that. Group G is our group. Uh, Algeria, Guinea, Uganda, Mozambique, Botswana and Somalia. Um, what, a, what a moment for the Somalis. I remember the last World Cup campaign, they, they beat Zimbabwe, didn't they, in qualifying. Um, another straight in the group phase because more teams can make it. Tough ask for Somalia to play us in match day one, but they'll be buzzing to be there and hopefully will give their nation good publicity and inspire young Somali footballers and athletes as well. Guinea with Jurassic could do something, but Algeria could have asked for a better group. And even if we lose in Guinea, which probably won't even be in Guinea because they're having to play Morocco, we should probably still be able to make it. Um, Tunisia as well. Talk about jammy luck. They've had an unbelievable gift. Any semi-tough group in Tunisia, I think, would be bang in trouble. But... Equatorial Guinea, who they had in the last qualification, and they lost to. Namibia, Malawi, Liberia, Sao Tome and Principe. That is the worst group here. That group is shocking. And an average Tunisia is probably going to still win it. Because if any other pot two side had been in there, even if Zambia were in there or DL Congo, I'd back them to win it. Look at the other nations. Equatorial Guinea could well make a World Cup in that sort of group. They could well do it. Keep an eye on that one. And then the last group, Mali and Ghana. This is spicy. I think Mali and Ghana are going to go head to head right to the final match day. It's going to go down to the wire, just like it is for Ghana at the AFCON qualifiers. That's an unbelievable group. You've got Madagascar, Central Africa Republic, Comoros and Chad making up the numbers. Mali still looking for that first World Cup. That's an unbelievable group as well. So that's who the groups are. Let's look at who, what the fixtures are for match days one and two. So... Match day one is pretty much the best team and the worst team facing each other in the group. Roughly, roughly. Um, and then the other fixtures as well. So Rwanda going to play Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe haven't played any real competitive football, but you expect them to win against uh, Rwanda. Equatorial Guinea should win at home to Namibia. DR Congo and Mauritania meet again, just like they did in that head-to-head, fast-paced AFCON qualifying group, where DR Congo and Mauritania, ironically, were the two teams that made it ahead of Sudan and Gabon. I still think the DRC will beat Mauritania this time with no problems. Ethiopia, Sierra Leone, oh, that's a tough one. Ethiopia were at the AFCON in Cameroon, but not this time. Sierra Leone were also at the AFCON in Cameroon, but not this time. I think that'll be a draw. Burundi playing Gambia, that'll be close. I could see that being a draw. Botswana, Mozambique. If Mozambique want to take this campaign seriously, they took the AFCON on seriously and they qualified, they've got to win against uh, Botswana away. Egypt are playing Djibouti. Now, Salah is going to start up here and he's going to start pad. I've no doubt Salah hat trick. Egypt 5 6 0. Remember when we played Djibouti, we won 8 0. I mean, what's Salah going to do to them? Goodness me. Sudan, Togo. Sudan probably playing in Libya, Benghazi. Togo didn't make the AFCON. Um, both those teams, if they want a good chance, they have to win that game. Um, I think Sudan will beat Togo, um, even in Libya. Nigeria are going to battle a Soto. We saw what they did again in the last qualifying campaign. They won a game 10-0, didn't they, against Sao Tome. What are they going to do against a Soto if they're playing in, in, in Lagos or whatever, or Abuja? Uh, Gabon, Kenya. I just can't take Gabon seriously. It's a, such a circus the way they're being run. Aubameyang thinks he runs that show. I wouldn't put it past if Kenya drew that. Algeria, Somalia, we, we'll preview that in depth, in detail, in the run-up to the game. Somalia's best players seemingly not allowed to play for Somalia. This could be another 8 0 slap in like the Djibouti game, or maybe even double figures in Baraki as well, um, back at the good stadium. Cape Verde Angola is a really interesting game in that group. Whoever wins that has got a big shot at, at trying to come top. Um, both those sides are going to need something against Cameroon, but Cape Verde were awful against Algeria. I think draw or Angola win. Morocco Erit Eritrea, which was penciled in to be match day one. Again, I think that's going to be cancelled because Eritrea are going to withdraw. So Morocco would going to be handed probably a 3 0 win and the three points, um, which is fair enough. Eswatini playing Libya. I mean, surely Libya. <laughs> Listen, I've been so disappointed in Libya. And, if, and the guy at Braga, Al Masrati, is so good. I hope Libya win that game. But if they don't, 
and Espertini got a couple of good results, a couple of shock results, um, particularly against Togo in the last qualifying campaign. There's no hope. You have to get off to a good start, particularly when you have to come top. There's no room for errors. If you're a team in the mid-tier mid, mid -tier bracket of African football, you have to beat the teams worse than you, or you've fluffed it already. Because you know the team top of the pot, the, the favourite, is going to win every game. Guinea, Uganda, again, that's probably going to be played in Morocco because Guinea can't play at home. Nonetheless, with, with Jurassic up front and Diakabi at the back, Guinea are going to make that very, very strong. Um, and I think the Guinea-Algeria rivalry is going to be very, very interesting to see just how close it is. It might be cl closer uh, us and Guinea than most people think. But if you look at Jurassic's goals in the Bundesliga this season, you can see why I'm saying that alone. Comoros playing Central African Republic. Sad to see Comoros not match the effort of making the last AFCON. Can they make a World Cup though? It's a big ask. I think this game will be a draw. Central Africa Republic so close to the AFCON with Kondogbia. They'll look to back, bounce back. Zambia against Congo, uh, Brazzaville. Zambia will win. Liberia, Malawi. Oh, I bet Malawi to win that one. Um, especially if Pahango's playing. Ghana should win at home to Madagascar. Ghana with Mali knocking on the door. Like, this isn't Central African Republic and Angola. This is Mali. Ghana have to beat Madagascar at home. Burkina Faso, I think, will beat Guinea-Bissau. Um, Cameroon against Mauritius. I mean, really, what is the point? They're playing against a beach, a seaside. Uh, could be a really big score there again. Likewise, Ivory Coast, Seychelles, also a seaside. So, two big wins, I think. You could, there's going to be some serious big wins. Tunisia are playing Sao Tome and Principe. I mean, what is the what am I seeing here? Mali, Chad. That's what I'm saying. The best team's playing the worst. Those games, those four I've just read out. Cameroon, Mauritius, Ivory Coast, Seychelles. I mean, they're playing tourist destinations, Jet 2 holidays and all that. I mean, what is the... I don't believe this. Anyway, I don't need to talk about those games. Um, and then it rounds off Senegal, South Sudan. Um, Nigeria, Tanzania. No, that's Niger, Tanzania, sorry. Oh, Tanzania might go there. That again, that'll probably be played in Morocco. So it's not really a home game for Niger. South Africa will beat Benin. Um, but there's going to be some big, big scores. Um, match day one will have big scores than any other match day. I mean, the other match day when they play, at least it'll be away. But these big sides at home, the floodgates are going to open. Match day two more interesting. As Zimbabwe, Nigeria, that's a game I'd like to see. Can Zimbabwe make it difficult and get Nigeria to drop points early doors and really open that one up? Um, that'll make it interesting. Burundi against Gabon. I don't know, I just feel like Burundi are better. Burundi were unlucky to not qualify. They messed it up against Cameroon. Um, I still think Gabon are a mess. Mozambique, Algeria in Maputo could be a difficult game. Early kickoff, boiling, humidity, and Mozambique are a good side. That's going to be a tough game for us. And we might even draw that, but I hope we don't. Sierra Leone, Egypt. Egypt should win. Sudan, uh, DR Congo once again the same as what happened uh, last time in that group. I don't know why Sudan, DR Congo and, and Mauritania seem to be playing each other all the time. So who knows what's going to happen this time. You've got Mauritius against Angola. Angola will win. Djibouti against Guinea-Bissau. Guinea-Bissau will win. Eritrea, Congo probably called off because they're going to withdraw. Gambia, Ivory Coast. That's a game Gambia need to make difficult. Gambia will be pleased to have made it to the Africa Cup of Nations. But can they do it against the big boys? Because they're going to have a big, big group with three tough games. They've got Senegal, Guinea and Cameroon. Good way for them to test themselves against Ivory Coast where we're testing ourselves against Somalia. Um, Liberia, Equatorial Guinea, I'll go Equatorial Guinea to win there. Same with Mali to beat um, Central African Republic away. I think Kenya will win in the Seychelles and have a nice holiday while they're there. Um, I mean, Chad Madagascar, what, what's the point? Uh, Lesotho, Benin, Benin will win that game. Rwanda, South Africa, South Africa will win that game. Eswatini, Cape Verde, might be closer than people think. I could, I'm going to go for a draw in that one. Somalia, Uganda. Um, one, I hope they let Somalia play at home in, in you know, Mogadishu or wherever. Two, what an occasion for Somalia to have a World Cup qualifier at home. It doesn't happen very often. They don't even play in AFCON qualifiers. I hope they get something there. But on paper, Uganda will have the better team. Botswana, Guinea. I hope Botswana do something and make it difficult. Remember when Algeria went there and only scored one goal and it was a belated corner. I hope they make it difficult for Guinea. We need Botswana to do us a favour in that one. Tunisia will win in Malawi. South Sudan are going to lose that one. Togo, Senegal, uh, Senegal, I should say. Senegal, you expect them to go there and win. Same with Cam Cameroon, you expect them to go to Libya and win. Morocco finally get a game with the Eritrea game being called off. Um, Tanz Tanzania will be at home, they can play in Dar es Salaam. And they did just draw in Algeria, but with Morocco having the rest of not playing Eritrea, 
they're going to go there and win quite comfortably Morocco. Sartome against Namibia, Namibia should win. Comoros Ghana, Ghana should win. Ethiopia, Burkina Faso, not an easy place to go, but Burkina Faso should win. And then the last game, Niger against Zambia. Zambia, I think, will win that game. So, that's how that group looks, uh, that, that set of fixtures looks. And um, there's some games which are close and some which are just so far apart but it's, it's, a, it's a formality there's always one shot hopefully it's not us anyway let me know what you're thinking about these games what you're looking forward to the most which fixture and um, yeah I look forward to covering them lots of fixtures i'll see you next time